Hi, this is Tag again and today I actually got a air-cooled setup on my bench here. Now this is because Matt over at Tech Tested is hosting a Athlon dual core overclocking competition in which you can only use ambient cooling. So uh, basically there is two categories, one for K8 based Athlon uh, dual cores and one for K10 or newer, so AM3 and FM2. Now exact details. I will just link you his video here in the top right corner so you can check it out. Uh, pretty good competition, I would say. And well, I, before I'm going to get into actual overclocking, I want to do a bit of a sort of uh, guide on how to submit valid scores. So let's go over to the screen. Oh, there is my timer. That's good for uh, R15 real time. But we are not doing that right now. So let's just zoom in on the screen. I know this is a bit, a bit sketchy. But hopefully it will focus. Yes, it does. Uh, so let's start with R15. I can't do it live because uh, as soon as I change the desktop background after R15 run, R15 gives up, which is strange. Anyways, uh, your basics are for HWBot valid submissions is that you have to have this entire rendering here on your screen, which means you can cover other parts of the bench if you don't have the screen resolution. Uh, so basically you can cover this up here or the ranking down here or like the bottom bar where it says click uh, on run and stuff. Uh, so that's fine. Also you are not allowed to either like hide the taskbar in Windows or just uh, edit it out on the screenshot. So you have uh, to have taskbar visible here. And you have to have CPU Z for your CPU and your memory here. This board down here is optional. Uh, for CPU Z, you want version 1.96 on yours. So if you're not sure if the CPU Z you have on your current Bench OS is up to date, just download the newest one. It's the easiest way. Uh, so that's that's basically it for the competition in particular. You want to use this background. Now, he said it is not mandatory, but he would prefer if you used it. So obviously I'm using it here. And yeah, that's your uh, R15 rules. Now, R15 is the most special one uh, in terms of this. For the SuperPi 32M stage, it's basically just you have to use your CPU, Z, uh, CPU and memory tab. That, that's about it. And same goes for the X265, but there is a bit of a quirk there. Now, at these clocks, it's never going to run X265, but let's start the bench anyways. Where is it? I had it here somewhere. There we go. Now, I'm not going to run it, but I'm going to talk about what you want to do. There we are. Now, with X265, after you are done running the bench, so run here, you have submit to HWBot and save data file down here. Uh, I recommend highly to not connect bench rigs to the internet and just save data file. Now, I'm just saying save data file here because what I sometimes do is just open CPU Z and out of habit take a screenshot of the whole thing. You can't submit a screenshot. You have to have this data file here of the benchmark. It's just the way it works because it's encrypted and like uh, checks if your run is actually valid. So quick tip there. So yeah, another tip here, obviously the timer on the phone, that is just for R15 real time, because if you run it real time, as you're going to see soon here, you are not going to uh, see the progress of the bench or know if it crashed. So I set this to, well, it's perfect, it's, for, it's 420, but uh, <laughs> this is legit the, the duration of the bench at the clocks I was running before. So yeah, <laughs> uh, really useful if, to know if, if your benchmark crashed. But yeah, that's about it for the like producing valid scores. I think so have fun benching I will now cut to me actually running some R15 I, I don't think I will do x265 today but 
maybe. If I did, you will obviously see later. Okay, so while I was actually recording me overclocking, there was a proper competition put up on HW board. So let's just go over this quickly. This is DDR1-2, I already asked. And AM2 plus will be removed, so it will stay K8. So AM2 and 939. Uh, you got all your stages here. So Supervise, Cinebench, X265. You can just go here and submit score. It's pretty easy. Uh, rules are also basically what I said. Uh, water, air. Uh, you can only participate in one of the divisions. So either DDR or either K8 or the more modern stuff. And you need a setup picture. So there is also DDR3 here. DDR3 here. So just usual stuff. The order is different for some reason. I don't know why. But yeah, same stuff. You can see FM2, FM2 Plus. Pretty sure there is FM1 missing here, but yeah. Anyways, that is the. I think there was Athlons on X, uh, FM1. I'm not 100% sure. Anyways, that is how it's set up now. It's actually on HW bot. So I will be submitting my scores from this bench session here later. Okay, so here we are now with an actually serious run. Now the timer here is currently running out. Now I started filming a bit early because I'm running a bit higher frequency and obviously real time versus the reference run which was at uh, like normal priority. So as you can see here in the right somewhere still 13 degrees ish. I would prefer some better temperatures for proper winter benching but oh well it's still better than indoors so well I'm I'm technically indoors but I have the window right above the screen here wide open so yeah <laughs> basically outdoor temperatures. Now this should finish, finish any second now there we are so 165 that's actually pretty decent though the efficiency is not quite there which is something to do with my sub timings being all over the place and i can't tighten them for some reason well, let's restore window layout timer is done save screenshot and flip this up here i want the motherboard tab but just in case it crashes between the two screenshots i'm extra careful so let's get you a bit more zoomed in. Oh yeah, a little bit over here even. Uh, now this is purely temperature. Now I deleted my chip, but I'm not really recommending you do it because, well, I thought it would be a paste like on 939 and it turned out to be sold out, so I'm pretty lucky that my chip is still alive. But I'm now running, so see, that's that's what I mean. That happens after a while. Uh, Synbench just crashes out. Uh, I have no idea why that happens, because it runs fine while it's running, and like a while after that, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Anyways, uh, I got my screenshot, so I'm happy. Uh, I'm running direct eye underneath the cooler here, so let's get you off here. This is my, that's some sort of Thermoride top low cooler. I use this because it basically cools the memory and the VRM and everything with it. So I just need one fan. And that one fan is a Nocta Industrial. Uh, pretty high RPM, really high flow. Uh, in BIOS I'm sitting at like three degrees Delta. Direct die. Uh, I'm not running liquid metal or anything here because I'm not a fan of liquid metal in general. Uh, I'm just running uh, Arctic MX5 underneath there. Then, well, maybe if you want to go absolutely crazy, delete the, the solar chip. But yeah, the the 3.6 GHz is just temperature here, really. Uh, with these chips, you want to keep them as, as cool as, as possible. Uh, which is actually surprisingly easy, because they don't have a lot of TDP. They, I mean, technically they have 125 watts, I think, but Try comparing this this chip to something more modern, and it's a world of difference. This this thing doesn't get hot at all. 
uh, which is probably why DFI thought they could get away with uh, for his VRM, uh, which turns out they could for like X2s like this, but as soon as you throw a, a proper phenom in, in here, uh, the board burns up, which is really unfortunate. So, yeah. Anyways, that's this R15 score. I can't restart it because Windows itself hang now, so onboard button, really nice. Just restart it that way. I got my score, so let me show you some BIOS settings now. There we are, Genie BIOS. Uh, now this is the memory timing I'm, I'm, I was complaining about. Uh, in theory, TRS should go to something like 8. It doesn't. TRFC, uh, TRC, I mean, should also go like at least 20, probably even 16, but it doesn't. Nothing goes tight here. I also tried to, to run uh, those two at, at C3, also didn't work. Though the microns should do it. Uh, kind of AMD just being AMD, I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm complaining on a, a high level here, because if I was running on a gigabyte port instead of a DFI, there's a good chance I couldn't run uh, C4 at all. I would have to run something like 544. Uh, so I'm actually pretty pretty well off with this. Now, HT link uh, on this board, you have to somehow set it to a fixed value. I just set it to 600. Uh, if you leave it on auto, it, it does weird, weird, weird things, but maybe that's just my board. The rest is, is really straightforward. Uh, DFI has its own voltages in its own little sub bios here. Uh, come on, focus. What I found out that this CPU doesn't scale past, this is 1.45 volts. Uh, also, it's really annoying that it has offsets. If you're binning stuff, uh, you basically have to... Uh, well, best way is to check uh, vCore here, down here in BIOS. Uh, because, like, it actually is plus on the, v, uh, on the stock VID of the chip. So, if you're binning, you have to always make sure that, like, the value displayed in BIOS is the same one. This is 2.1. Now, 2.1 is super low. I tried up to 2.3 to get anything tighter stable. It did not work. So, I'm just running 2.1. Uh, Northbridge core is pretty irrelevant, probably. Uh, unless you have a chip with uh, lower multi and running higher FSB and, and higher memory clocks at, like, C5 then you might want to raise this to like 1.35 or something. Um, but that, that's about it for for this platform. It's really kind of boring, honestly, in that regard. Uh, it, it's less boring in the regard of like randomly cutting out and, and stuff like that. But that, that's honestly not interesting. That's just annoying. Uh, anyways, I will just try push some more. And okay, we are about to finish or hopefully finish another run of R15. Now this is still same core clock but I I tried the uh, what is called uh, 2T option or whatever it is in BIOS. Might be 1T now but uh, CPU Z still said 2T. So I'm, I'm just hoping for a 166 basically. Uh, a bit better FE again because kind of went to crap. Yeah there we go 166. Well, let's quickly do the windows and it crashed so no good see that that's what happens all the time now okay so we're coming up on another bench finishing now as you can see I already have uh, OC snap opened so I can hopefully take a screenshot faster than it can crash so let's see how this goes I'm obviously only going to take a screenshot if I get a 166 here. Which I might not without the tweak of it have uh, me having the benchmark in the corner. I don't. See. Okay, so I actually bothered with uh, X265. But yeah, I actually took the tripod back indoors. So sorry for the shaky cam again. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I didn't think I would continue benching here. So, current personal best is uh, 1.44, so it looks decent. 
Hopefully, I get like 1.48 or something. 47, 48, 489. Yeah, that's good. Temperature, bit cooler now, bit later in the evening. Well, night already. Still same setup, obviously. Let's quickly save this. I hope it doesn't have the same issues as Cinebench with random crashes. Though... I'm at significantly lower clocks. Close this. And save data file. Save data file. Save. So, yeah, there it is. Okay, so now I'm actually going to finish this. And, well, I hope you enjoyed my little... Uh, peek into my overclocking session for the uh, tech tested Eflon dual core competition. Uh, this for sure won't be the last bench session but next one will be Superby 32M and I need to set up a OS for that because well I don't have any Superby 32M OS on a SSD right now that is working on AMD. So yeah that's it. Bye.